narrow down on more like talk and we just so more we'll see how it works it, right yeah because if this works then we can go into things like oh let's say you want to make a life game theme what should you yeah. look for if you want to make, make a yeah exactly so like, if this works if it doesn't then like, we'll know but i i feel like this is a good spot because storm is kind of complicated and you can only do it in a band of power level right yeah Welcome to episode 62 of Path to Cube. I'm Kevin. I'm Fernando. How's it going this week, Fernando? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well as well. I would never have expected that. I mean, I think I think one of these weeks we'll we'll do some good. I mean, I'm saying that like we're in, you know, it's been 62 episodes and you've been doing well in 61 of them. Yeah. There was that one attempt at changing the yeah. intro, you know. Yeah. Well, maybe week. one day we'll do good instead of just being well, we'll do some we are good. Doing good. I think we've already did this skit before. Have we? I think so. Probably. I mean, we need a new intro then. Good morning, Chicago. Or something like that, right? Isn't, that Isn't it good morning, Vietnam? Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm getting from. What's yeah. the Chicago one? I have no clue. Hello, America. Isn't that one of them? Good morning, America. Or something? I'm yeah, sure, good morning, I'm sure America. it is. That's a show. Yeah. Anyways, we got some news. Legacy bannings. They're actually cube-relevant cards, so we're going to talk true. about them. Uh, Gitaxian Probe and Death Rite Shaman. Yep. So those are, like, probably if you go on, like, the average 360 cube on Cube Tutor, those Ooh, both show up. that's a good idea. Up. We should have done that. They probably do. Yeah. They so do. that means the price probably dropped. Not that they were really that expensive. Death Rite Shaman is expensive. How expensive was it? That's a good question. I don't remember when I... I think I bought them when they were still in standard, though. Well, I bought one. Uh, that's probably a few. That was probably like ten bucks, around okay. there probably. And get probe was, at least creeping up to like. Well, a few bucks. get probes got banned. It got banned in modern. modern got banned yeah. in, it got restricted in vintage. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I probably like see doesn't affect. It's probably commander. Does. I don't know. if Commander even wants to play that. It's too. Not get probe. The other one. Oh, death, death right, right shaman. The commander must play death right. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start with get probe. Um, don't put it in your cube. Let's move on. Uh, it breaks <laughs> color pie, and it's it's not very fun. It's, it's, it's just it's, it's it's basically playing with one less card in your deck. It's like playing with uh, what's it called? Um, what's the cycling for two life? Oh, uh, street wraith. Street wraith. Except you get upside. Yeah, you and get... sometimes you don't have to pay life. <laughs> uh, you lose instant speed, but who cares? You mm -hmm. almost never street wraith instant speed anyways, because you just want to know what you do before you're, you make uh... a decision. Hollow one. And you do just they want to sell up your yard. At instant speed? They'll just do anything to. Yeah, but not an instant speed. They'll just do it on their turn, won't they? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So screw Gip Probe. Yeah, but Death Rite Shaman. That's a. That's uh, a great cube card. Have we talked about Frexy Mana? Frexy Mana. We yeah, yeah right? we've we, we've touched on Frexy yeah, exactly. Mana. So our listeners know that Gip Probe should. GTFO as the kids say these days. Uh, okay. And then Death Rite Shaman is complicated. Because that's the one where if you exile a land card, you get you to mana. produce mana. And then uh, creature green, card. Well, green tap creature, gain two life. Black tap, insert sorcery, sorcery, lose two life. Yeah. Your opponent. Uh, so I like the green and the black. That's the, like things that green and black do. I do have a problem with the fact that you can play black for a 1-1. One, one, or is it a 1-2? I don't know. Who cares? doesn't matter. Uh probably a one 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 two seems really good but you can play black for a creature that taps and adds mana which is a green ability it's not really a red ability and i actually like so i don't like death right shaman in constructed i do think it breaks color pie but in cube it's so much harder to have lands in the yard yeah. That I feel like Death Rite Shaman isn't really a ramp card. And it like, is a graveyard, right? Because you can target your opponent. It is a, a graveyard. But there's only like 10, maybe 20 fetches running around. And so it's so much harder to get that mana that I think it happens li little enough that you're okay. Like it doesn't really break color pie. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like the instances where you do play black to play it and then it adds mana is so yeah. few. And I mean... I like the card because it because it just does so many things, um, and then like I don't know I don't think anyone's ever played Death Rite Shaman and been like no this thing sucks like it 
it has like you can pick out cards from your opponent's graveyard. You can start putting a clock on them. Yeah. Um, it gains I, you life. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just fits a lot of a lot of decks. It's one of those kind of core cards that enables a lot of archetypes yeah. and answers a lot of archetypes too. And it's you know, a lot worse yeah. than in constructed. Constructed, you just like. Yeah, there's I so have much value in constructed. Lands. I'm guaranteed to go turn one fetch. So my death right and my opponent's fetching too. So I never run out. Yeah, so the death right in cube actually like enables choice and, and yeah. gameplay. Yeah. More than just enabling game game like choice for yourself. Like, yeah, ramping out early and yeah. then using it to hate stuff later. Um so yeah, so big big uh thumbs up on death right and thumbs down on uh get probe. probe, yeah. Um so last week we did an episode about uh a modular cube. Thank you. How to make one. Yeah. Had a brain fart. And uh, we got some uh, listener feedback that uh, they liked it. So we're glad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're happy. Sorry that... that we never actually realized that we didn't do an episode about cre- actually making. We're so focused on like trying to sell the idea to people that we didn't realize, oh, what we happens once we sell it? it? <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. let's teach so, people to make it first. So. Yeah. So I'm glad it helped out. And mm. uh, Any more questions, let us know if you're yeah. unsure. Um, yeah. Ask us. We'll We'll answer. Either mm-hmm. in the podcast or, or mm-hmm. on Facebook or email. Yep. Um, yeah. I think we can uh, move on to your favorite little uh, over-explaining oh, yeah. what we the, do. It's uh, the Cube Card Spotlight. So yeah. What is that? Every Kevin? week, Fernando and I bring cards. Really? That we feel Whoa. are worthy for your cube, or at least a cube. Probably yours because you, you have a good, good cube like ours. Um, either unique you know, gameplay... She- I, I should. I should. You just... should be careful with that because I think we have done cube card spotlights that are no longer in our cube. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, some... not that they're bad. It's just that either a they got they were too weak. So it's not just for our cube. It's all power levels. We did one yeah. time did hooded hydra, hooded yeah. hydra, hooded brawler, was... hooded brawler. That card's a beast. Can I exert yeah. that. It's a five four. Yeah, Ugh. but it is lower power yeah. level. So it's all power level. Yeah. So, anyways, I brought seething song. It's tuna red instant. Uh, add red, 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 red. Add five red symbols to your mana pool. To Whoa. your mana. To your mana. No, no, it's not to your mana. It's just add red, 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 red. Yeah, that's the end. That's yeah. all the card says now. It's so annoying. <laughs> it doesn't make chromatic sense. Well, it probably does. It just doesn't sound right. Well, yeah, it's like add three. Yeah. So, anyways. It's a mana ramp card. It's similar to like you know your uh, pyretic ritual, your uh, desperate well, rituals, the yeah functional equivalent, and dark ritual. So this one's in red, and I feel this one it like sees a lot of cubes, and it's never like first pickables. It's never like a super powerful card. Well, but sure. it, it it always seems to like you know it enables. Like your 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 red green ramp, you know your X spells. Um, your yeah, and lower power level cubes. I think you can play it as purely like I get to I, whatever I'm doing so powerful that if I can do it two turns earlier, it it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it sits in sideboards a lot. Yeah. Um, for not finding a home, but it's kind of like it's like a balanced dark ritual. Yeah. Dark ritual does the same thing, but it doesn't like On if you ever. One are in a unpowered cube and your opponent does like dark ritual and turn two and put down a like go a forest dork and then s- turn two swamp dark ritual into a colonian hydra i've yeah. seen it happen um and you don't have immediate like path to exile but i mean you, you the game's over i mean that's like i think i well, think and that's the thing about dark ritual, very right? early iterations of of cubes might include cards like colonian hydra and dark ritual to, to be fair yeah um Desperate ri- or Seething Song does the exact same thing, doesn't it? If you just drop a mountain instead of swamp, yeah, you get five mana. The only you can't do a Colonial Hydra, but you could do like a Thunderball Hellkite. Yeah, it's just Colonial Hydra ends the game in two hit. Yeah, well, Colonial Hydra is pretty iffy to include in cubes just because it kind of wins games on its own. Well, it doesn't have a lot of answered. gameplay. You just play it, and you're yeah. like, "Okay, I will." Attack. It's good by itself. It doesn't it need a trampler. It does. You don't need to build around it. You'll just put it in your deck. Yeah, it's just a removal check. Yeah, it's not like Poly K that like does more stuff. 
Um, but yeah, so Seedling Song is like it has its place, but like I think it's worth worth talking about because it it's it's in that weird zone where, like you said, half the time it sits in the sideboard, and half the time, like other half it's like does a lot of work or it's like misplayed a lot. Yep. Um, so I feel like yeah, the best decks would be like. Yeah, ramp decks. I feel wow, or the, the fast best, mana ramp best decks. Yeah, or topic of the day. Hmm? That's the best yeah. decks. Yeah, or if you're gonna run a uh, storm in your cube. Yes. Uh, this card really helps. And I'm when we talk about storm, we're talking about like unpowered storm. Well, it also like modern like, storm. To be fair, um, seething song does belong in powered cubes too. Yeah, if you're I do see storm. it in powered lists. Um, but then it, actually, maybe you even have a bigger reason to run it, right? Like if you whatever your seething song is so powerful, like. If it's like sneak attack on turn three and then pay for an activation, right? Then maybe whatever you're ramping in is so good that it's worth it. Or maybe even turn two, like turn one door, turn two seething song, sneak attack, whatever comes after mm -hmm. is probably good, right? Yeah. Um, although you did spend a lot of man a lot of cards there, so it better be good. It better be like an Emrakul with or like some Eldrazi with Annihilator or yeah. like a Blight Steel that ends the game immediately. Um, but in regular cubes, yeah, I I've played seething songs in non storm decks. Um, but it does shine in storm decks. Yeah, and that's our topic for today. Yeah, it's, uh, so unpowered storms and yeah. what how we like to run it and how you sh should consider running it or not and how it. to run it. Yeah, I, it's kind of like well, we'll talk about it and how to run it, and then you can make the choice whether you want to put that investment into your cube to run it. And whether like do the the cost benefit we run it yeah and we run it a specific style and that's not like to say that that's how you should run it mm -hmm. so and we're always learning so who knows maybe we're wrong about some of these cards and we, we also really like color pie so we try to avoid breaking color pie as much as possible mm -hmm. um, so before we get into the topic I will do my card and my card is aggressive mining and I love aggressive mining it's three and a red for an enchantment and it says you cannot play lands then it also says sacrifice a land draw two cards so you can change all of your lands to draw two cards that's so powerful yeah i mean it's a it's a really weird out there card and you can't play lands so in non-storm decks how it plays out is you either gotta play a super late right or you have eight aggressive. lands play it and then untap and because it's free you can just untap float the mana and sack right yeah um and like drawing two cards a turn is insane. So like mm -hmm. even if you just sack one land, but also you have to think all the lands I draw is useless. Are dead. Right? Yeah. Now what he does synergize with is sacking your own permanence or bouncing it, right? Because mm -hmm. then you can sack and then like draw a bunch, sack, and then start playing your lands again, right? So he does work if you have demonic pact, woo, aggressive mining lines right beside it because they both ask the same thing. Um, although the Monic Pack, it handles way better being bounced. While yeah. I would rather sack aggressive uh, mining for value because like I'm probably not recasting at that game. So, now, in Unpowered Storm, what we did find out is that he actually does some insane. Because you know what, when you're comboing off, like there's that's no the next turn. You turn. Win. Yeah, yeah. So if you play like turn four aggressive mining and then turn five float everything, sack all your lands, draw eight cards, that's... that can actually be like huge. Yeah. Right? Because like, you're going to generate more mana with cards like Seeding Song. Yeah. And who cares if you don't have any lands? Now, it does affect cards like High Tide and stuff. Yeah. That kind of want you to be tapping mana. But yeah. uh, we'll see that later. With aggressive mining, though, I found like in, in non Storm decks, like I've tried playing it in an aggressive deck. And sometimes it's really hard to, to find the timing on that because you could be sitting on just an awkward hand lots of the time. Yeah, but sometimes you get an out six, right? Yeah. And then you're like, hey, I got four four or five lands in play. I'm just going to cast aggressive mining, untap, float five mana, and sack all my lands. And just dig for that lightning bolt, yeah. uh, brimstone volley, whatever combo spell. I mean, even you can do it there, one right? at a time to see what you Yeah, draw. exactly. You don't you don't actually have to sack everything. But like, yeah. when you're playing limited decks and you're trying to find a card to finish the game, like, because you don't have, you know, you don't have to do it immediately. You could just let it sit on it get a couple of edges it is a lot harder and i think you do have to be you know a lower power level and just like the monic pact i think it the decks don't come out it does sit in sideboards but it is a card that goes in storm that also goes elsewhere yeah maybe rarely i think probably rarely 
but that's fine, right? Like your cube's gonna have fifteenth picks, yeah, right. And it's just like seeding song. It's fine if it sits inside words half the time, goes in storm decks forty percent of the time, and non storm decks ten. If that's the outcome, that's fine. You because, have to be aware of that. Yeah, and you're gonna have dead cards, and and storm hinges on accepting that sometimes you have dead cards because you do not always want a storm player. Yeah, who period. wants who wants uh uh open the what's the what's the goblin maker one? Open the warden. Oh, empty the warren. Empty the warrens. Yeah. Cuz what deck is going to play that if that's in your cube? Oh, any storm card. No one's going to play. I yeah. think the only card storm card and we're getting ahead Remote. of ourselves, but is uh what's it called? The new one from the unset? Oh. Crow storm. Yeah. Crow storm's actually bad cuz if you just cast one other spell, it's you're paying it. 3 mana for a 2 4 flying. Yeah. That's fine. And then if you cast two other spells, then now it's three mana for three six flying, and that's acceptable. Mm-hmm. So I think that you might see play, but um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, we'll get know. there when we, yeah. when we talk about so the storm cards. First, we're doing emphasizing. We're talking about unpowered storm, not powered storm. Yes, let's, let's make that clear. Thing. We're gonna put that in the in the show show title. We're talking about unpowered storm here because I don't know very much. I mean, okay, I understand the idea, but. We don't play a lot of Powered Cubes, so we've never... I don't yeah. know about you, but I've never played Powered Storm. I've seen it played a lot. I've seen it on, I've like, seen Kenji, like, play yeah, many times. the streamers times. play it on the Vintage yeah. Cube. Um, and, like, it looks broken. I understand the idea, right? It's kind of like watching Vintage. I've never mm-hmm. played Vintage. But I know enough that for the main decks, like, Burning Oath, I know what the deck's trying to do. I know what the cards do. Like, I don't know why he picks this over this and why, like, all the niches of the deck... But I do understand that he's going to combo off. He's going to burn an oath for tendrils and all this stuff's going to happen, right? With using an oath of druid or whatever yeah. the hell, right? And they, they have like alternate paths and it's cool. It's like Doomsday. I understand like, oh, I get it. You Doomsday and then you have a lab maniac and you draw your deck or you Doomsday and you do this, 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 and then you ch- tendrils and, and you win mm-hmm. through Storm. So it's really, I get that, but I can't pilot those decks, not in a million years. Yeah, I, I, I and I'm fizzle not gonna, out. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not going to tell someone about how to, oh, here's how you build the Doomsday deck. I don't know. Right? So this is the same thing. We're not going to talk about Powered Storm, but we will talk about Unpowered Storm because we have played that. Yeah. And uh, and we have our opinions. And again, yeah. keep that in mind that we are very anti-card um, pie breaking. And so we try as much as possible not. So if you, we will talk about cards that we don't play that are very good in Storm, like Dark Ritual. Mm-hmm. And we just were like, no. Right? And that makes our storm be kind of wonky in the sense, look, we have aggressive mining, right? Yeah. And that's not a, I think, m- how many lists on Cube Tutor have aggressive mining on it? It, yeah. it is pos- It is entirely possible that there's just one. Yeah. And it's us. Or it's like some like <laughs> no, list I that think, ended I think, after I think aggressive mining, people have that as a pet card and they'll put it on their cube. I don't list. think so. I think it's people who haven't updated a cube since yeah. M15 came out. And they're <laughs> like, this looks fun. Put it in. Yeah. It never came out. Uh, so... so so there is a, a post on the uh, uh, MTG Cube subreddit mm-hmm. um, that we'll put a link in the description that kind of is a is a very good kind of summary of of what like Storm and Cube should do and, and how to do it. Yes, and we based a lot of our formatting around his formatting. So yeah. how we made the show notes for the episode and how we're going to go through everything. Honestly, it's a little bit like copying him. But we're doing our own, like, okay, this is what we like. And so he explains how, okay, these are what you need and these are what these cards function as. So if you you don't understand Storm or don't understand how to build Storm in a cube, read it. It's good. Um, And we're more focusing on, look, this is, these, yes, this is, these are the pillars. This is how we run it. But we're focused, we're going one layer, like, this is the cards we like. These are the cards we don't like and why. And if you, and always extrapolate, right? We're not going to cover every single card. Think about what we say for each section mm-hmm. and go like, oh, this is why he likes a card. This is why they don't like these cards. This is, you know, now I'm thinking of card, you know, X. Oh, would would this be good because of those reasons or would it be bad because of those other reasons, right? So it helps yeah. you extrapolate, you know. And then obviously once you build it, you can always be like, ah, you know what? I don't agree with them about this. Yeah, okay, go for it. Like, we're right, but we're not telling you what to do. You yeah, know, like that's our philosophy. <laughs> like it's not we're wrong, you're wrong, but you know, do whatever you want. Yeah. So, uh, and that we have some key ideas yeah. about how storm should be run in cube and yeah. the goals. Yeah. So basically, um, some key factors are like we want to know the the least like amount of cards that go into this archetype 
to not like be toxic and yeah and, they and only not... go in storm so i think the the marquee are the storm cards for example yeah. right like you have a mind's desire well guess what it's only gonna see play if someone's drafting storm yeah right so we want as least as possible because yeah, cause you want to promote competition in a yeah. draft and that's how you make a, a healthy cube is when you have a card and you're like hey like six of my eight archetypes really want this card this is probably a really yeah. good card for my cube because so many decks will use it and that's going to be fun to see this card be used yep all over but also don't make it too powerful that it's just yeah every deck will want to see solar ring so yeah. Don't don't and get too powerful. It's like Sigil the Empty Throne, I think, is the poster boy for that, right? Only the enchantment deck wants it. Yeah. Period. Right? And so in you Storm. You want to minimize that yeah, type of thing in exactly. your in your storm kind of archetype. Yep. Um and like you said, because the draft matters so much, you want people to be fighting over these cards. Yeah. And you don't want to just have like twenty cards just for storm that only one person's gonna take because they realize it's open. And then it's just, oh, this guy got the Storm deck. And whereas everyone else was fighting, like, healthy competition over the cards, this one guy was just wheeling all his cards. All the Storm and, cards that no one else wanted. Yeah. yeah. And then just comes with, like, oh, he assembled the... The nuts. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, like, the thing about Storm is that a lot of its point... Like, you can look at a Storm deck after it's been drafted and go, that drag should win 60% of the time. Now, we still want interactivity... Right, we still want to increase. That's one of our other goals: is try and increase interactivity. But we also want well. Um, man, today is like I'm all over the place. Um, we want um, we want to increase interactivity, but we also we also know that when you look at a storm deck, you're gonna look at it and go, okay, this is sixty percent deck now. Yeah given skill and interactivity we're going to be able to change so your opponent should still feel like he could be able to change yeah. that but a lot of your storm deck is like how consistent is it to storm out so a lot of the deck is won you know a lot of your matches quote unquote are won during the draft mm -hmm. right where you're going to sit and like look my storm deck's great my storm deck is the the nut storm deck so i should just win 80 percent of the games right unless mm -hmm. you have something really strong to counter something else yeah. to say about it maybe it's like cards like thoughtsies or, like or maybe it's something spheres or something. yeah or graveyard hate and like yeah. hopefully they're not very too hate cards but just cards that can interact right maybe when i play my goblin nut transfer you can lightning bolt immediately and you know or maybe you you hold up counter spells at the right point so there's still some interactivity but you still look at the storm deck and go oh yeah this deck is garbage it's never going to win a game yeah or this deck's amazing it's going to win most of its games and you have to be prepared with with unpowered storm i'm not sure if we're going to talk about this later um, I kind of forget with the show notes, but when, when like, you have to be careful because when you do include Storm as, like, an archetype, like, it's very much going to be a solitaire-type game for the Storm player where yeah. he's, like, sure, he's going to have a bit of interaction in his deck probably to answer some things to buy him more time, but most of the time it's going to be, I'm going to wait to the last possible minute that I can before I die to try to win the game because Unless the more resources... yeah, match up, right? Yeah. Where then it's, like oh my opponent's tapped out here's my opening yeah or they're like okay they're not gonna tap out and it's like they're gonna you're gonna have to bait them into countering the right wrong yeah. thing and then there's a mind yeah game. and that's kind of the fun part but lots of times if you know you're playing like some aggressive deck versus a storm deck it's just gonna be two people playing solitaire who can get the person to zero yeah. first and we try to minimize that but you have yeah. to accept that that that's probably gonna be yeah. some of the games and you know I think I think that's like not a bad thing to have. Like it's fun to try storm. It's fun to get people to navigate it and play something that's different than conventional magic. You have to remember that look, a round a draft of magic has three rounds. So if you have one player playing, you have seven opponents. Only three of them are gonna play the storm deck. So that means four people aren't even gonna play against the storm deck. So in terms of minimize like that's not a heavy impact. And which comes up to another key factor that we want is that we want the deck to be draftable when it's open, but not always present. So we don't want a draft that's like, look, Storm is in my cube. You always have a Storm player. Mm -hmm. Then it gets too much, right? Because then your players are going to be like, man, I'm fucking tired of playing against the guy who, play, who yeah, plays Yeah, and Storm. especially the same guy who loves yeah. Storm, who's always going to go for it. So people aren't going to even Try fight to him for fight it. Because like, oh, he's going to first yeah. pick the Storm cards way higher than everyone else. Yep. So don't yeah. don't fight with him or else you both end up with crappy decks. Yeah, And then and then what, I'll, all the, what also happens is, well, now, if every week three people have to play against that guy, well, you're playing against Storm every three weeks and sometimes twice in three weeks, Yeah. right? So your expected value of playing against Storm is huge. 
while if it's only in present in half or a quarter of the drafts because yeah. people are competing and so like those storm yeah. cards are just not always open and, you just and can't assemble it and that's like we said we want to know the the least amount of cards that are toxic that will go into storm but also will go into other decks like yeah. you have your card draw spells your yeah you know and we'll, we'll talk about some some more cards but um let's talk about the storm archetype itself it's kind of like you can break down it's kind of like almost like not an a b mechanic it's almost like an a b c d e mechanic there's a, a bunch of, there's like yes. it's a bunch of moving parts to make this work um let, let's just use the the lingo that i forgot the guy i really wish we could credit yeah. the guy's name well we it's can gonna, put it in the comments yeah the yeah. show the show notes are gonna have the link but that guy yeah. in reddit thank you um let's use the the pillars he calls yeah. it pillars now he said four pillars and then he went on to extra so we're just calling it five pillars deal yeah. with it yeah so Pretty we'll stable. call them pillars instead of ABCD mechanic because that's a little complicated uh, it's like dredge with two extra mechanics yeah so one of the pillars is obviously the storm cards the ones that say storm on it the ones that should win you the game either empty the warrens brain freeze tendrils uh grape shot it would be safe to say that you do not have a storm deck if you're <laughs> if you do not have this pillar that is guaranteed i mean you could have either for extra reservoir and not have any storm cards and then that would be Ooh, your touche and that could be considered storm because touché. you're comboing off and then yeah you but then you gotta win with, with like a card like grinning ignis right because yeah. like there's no way you can cast 50 spells without or get to 50 life without like uh some combo yeah. well something that just like like a men might that can be bounced up and down or an orange thought or like something like yeah. that right where it's like something costs zero and you can just bounce it back to your hand mm -hmm. and you just infinitely replay it yeah um Okay. Yes, I guess. I guess Aetherflux <laughs> Reservoir is. A st I guess it probably should be on our list of storm yeah. cards. Anyway, um, so we'll that's one it. pillar. Yep. Second pillar is mana. Yes. You obviously need a way to either generate generate mana. excess mana, be able to use mana efficiently. Yeah, you're gonna be casting spells. Yeah. Because you need to get a storm count. Yeah. And to do that, you need to cast spells that are usually pretty cheap what a and shock. can and can usually. Gen regenerate themselves which kind of goes into the next thing is these spells hopefully draw cards or yeah yeah well that's that's or yeah so mana. you have the spells that generate mana yeah. the spells that have storm and then the spells that have card draw yeah you have your tutors the spells that tutor because that, get that you those. increases well that gets you anything right that's the big thing about it gets tutors. you like, the piece you're missing i need the yeah exactly i need the mana yeah i need so the this card one's draw. not necessary but, but it helps consist make your deck yeah. consistent. And so it's like you're gonna have to adjust that. If the storm deck's winning too much, this is a great way to reduce consistency. Yeah. If it's winning too little, this is a great way to add consistency. Yeah. The better your tutors, the more reliable it is. And lastly, the extra value pillar. So this is the bonus one that the dude on Reddit did. But like that's just his own thing. And this covers things like Mizic like this is just the random ass things that generate a lot. So like Mizic's mastery. Yeah. That or past in flames. That's kind of like a draw spell. But it's kind of more like gravy. Yeah, because it's like, well, it's like, it's a draw spell and it's a mana spell and it's a tutor spell in the sense that whatever you've cast already, you get to recast. Yeah. So it kind of gives you more of everything, right? Mizzix Master is the same. If you can ever overload that, however you got that mana, you're just going to regain the mana because now you're recasting everything. Did you ever like, what would what would you put like uh, a card like Gutter Snipe? Would that be uh, in Gutter your storm? Snipe? Would that be considered like part of the storm card, or would it be considered that's a, part of the extra value? That is a value? fantastic card that supports storm. Yeah, because you can literally gutter having a gutter snipe in play and casting a tendrils is the exact same thing at the beginning. If all your spells are instant sorceries, yeah. right? Because the gutter snipe is only instant sorcery, but tendril kills once you get your storm count to ten. Yeah, gutter snipe kills if you get your storm count to ten. Right. Yeah. So gutter snipe is a fantastic example of a card. Now, I forgot about it. It's not on our show notes. But we're talking I about guess it now. You so. could talk about I, I guess it could be a storm card. Yeah. It could also be an extra value card. Yeah. Like I mean, control decks like Gutter Snipe puts a clock. I mean agro decks like it because it puts a clock. Yes. It is a fantastic pseudo storm card. Yeah. Like Aetherflux. Although Aetherflux does any other deck will run Aetherflux? Mm, that's, that's the a thing. Good. It's pretty toxic. I think you, you could really... run it in a life gain deck. But even then, it's yeah, it's bad. It's pretty tough because you need to be casting do, a lot of yeah. spells to get any value. But Aetherflux, if you start at twenty life and you're still at twenty, a storm because you gain you you don't gain one per spell. It's like one then two then three, right? Yeah, it kind of 
it adds up, right? Yeah. So at 10, you're adding, you're gaining 50. So even if you're at one health, if you cast 10 spells, again, lethal for tendrils, Aether Flux wins the game because you go from 1 to 51. Yeah, and then you and then blast you just them. Blast them. So um, it is an alternative, although I do think that it's going to be just as toxic as tendril. But it is interesting because it's like a tendrils in blue, but you do have to cast it ahead. You can't like dig for it. That is a lot harder. Mm-hmm. I do don't like that part. Yeah. Um, but you can set it up with more on board shenanigans, so you can like give a whole different method. Like again, bouncing a midmite, right? Yeah. Like maybe you bounce a midmite and then you just infinitely bounce it, and that gets your storm count up. But you need to win. You're not drawing cards while well, either flex. You just have to win on board. Yeah. Um. Yes. So let's talk about the storm cards. The so cards- one, probably one of the best storm cards. Um. For like storm and power cubes is brain freeze. That's the one that mills your opponent. Brain it's, freeze it, wins it's mill so two, fast. right? It's mill two with storm. It's mill three. Mill three with mill storm. Three with storm. And so the thing is that you start at thirty three, but if you're storming off on past turn three, you're really at thirty, mm-hmm. right? And so like storm count tens usually win. And then if you're able to buy time, usually storm counts eight or nine win. Mm-hmm. And the thing about brain freeze is that it's super cheap. It's instant speed. So a lot of times, if you have things like past and flames. All, you can just, like, if your opponent ever casts two spells a turn, you can kind of just, like, end step, cast Brain Freeze. That gives you three. Yeah. And then untap, start comboing off, yep. and you just have to get, reach five or six. And, and then you cool recast with, them uh, from the yard. With Brain Freeze, I remember playing a game where I, I kind of had a few counter spells, and so did my opponent. So we had a big counter spell war. And at the end, I realized, like, between the two of us, like, five or six spells have been cast. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I'll end a turn Brain Freeze. And then that was, like, Yeah. That basically put a huge clock on them because also now instead of having, you know, they actually put a clock on their turns. Like, yep. Um, and then if you can ever recast it from the yeah. yard, it's just over. Yeah. Because that you might need like one, two, three storm counts. Yeah. So you don't even need to go yeah. off. You just like go like Seething Song, Past and Flames, Brain Freeze, yeah. done. Or Seething Song, if you have blue, like Snapcaster, Brain Freeze, I don't know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Snapcaster is a fantastic yeah. other card that works perfect with Storm. Yeah. Um, Tendrils. How much does that cost? That's two, two BB. BB. Yeah, and it's... you need Storm Ten to win. Sometimes you need less with Fetch Shocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is something. That is an interactability mm-hmm. that people don't really think is that. Like, if your opponent's going to win on Tendrils, and you need to end the clock, you have to remember. Okay, I can shock myself to put more pressure, but that eliminates a whole Storm count. Mm-hmm. Right now, that's very minor, but it could mean the game. Right, because a lot of times with Storm, it's about fizzling and not fizzling. And sometimes you're like, oh, man, I got my tendrils all the way up to 8. I got my tendrils all the way up to 7. I got my tendrils all the way up to 9. But I didn't get that 10. Mm-hmm. And so self-harm is very important if you're playing against an opponent with tendrils. Just like if you're planning, planning on playing against an opponent with brain freeze, well, Eldrazi can win you the game. Yeah. right? Or if they have no other win con, you know it's legal? Sideboarding into like 200 lands? Yeah. There's that famous, uh, I think Kenji did yes, it, on, Kenji a, did it. On, a, yeah. on a stream where he realized his opponent had like a really good, or like just had a storm deck. He but put only 4,000 forests yeah. in his deck. And just realized the guy can't actually win without the brain freeze. And he's like, well, I don't have to do anything. I just have to draw cards, yeah. keep any hand. <laughs> and just like forest, 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 forest. Yeah. And then so they some, some tech is, is add more cards to your deck. Yeah. So. Now, obviously, it's important why a, a storm deck should have multiple avenues of winning, <laughs> yeah. but it would be hilarious. Some guy just yeah. grabs the entire basic land box that you have yeah. for your cube and just starts shuffling that. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> look, you, it doesn't even matter how you shuffle. Uh, you will see it coming. So maybe, he, they, like, at that point, they could sideboard out into, like, a 1-1. Yeah. So wait until they present their deck and then do it. Yeah. And just be like, oh, I will sideboard into all this and then do it. Um, <laughs> it will be a pain to unsideboard after it, though. Yeah. Uh, Mind's Desire. So that's the 4BB sorcery. Now, Mind's Desire is kind of weird because it doesn't actually win you the game. Now, if you have Brain Freeze or Tendrils or another win con, Mind's Desire digs you for that. And then if you Mind's Desire for like 6, 7, 8, sometimes that's enough. Mm -hmm. Also, Mind's Desire is cast. And so when you start revealing cards, A, you can cast them at any, like... um, I think. Don't quote me. I forget now. It's been a while since I've cast the magic. But I believe you can cast until end of turn. I don't think it's immediately. Mm-hmm. It might be immediately. But it doesn't matter. Because you just start casting shit. And then, because it's cast, 
they add to your storm count. And so, like, you can sometimes you mind desire at storm count four. Then you flip four, and it's a bunch of mana and draw spells. And so you refill your hand. You have mana floating, and then it just like tendrils and win. Or you go boom, 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 tendrils win. So mind desire, big fan. It really again does not really see play outside of storm decks. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah, it's it's definitely helps enable it. Yeah. We have a storm crow or crow storm crow storm which as you know we talked about earlier in the show is one of the ones that's more playable outside of a storm deck yes because all you need is like two or three spells to yes. make it work which can easily happen in cube when you have cheap instants and sorceries or cheap creatures yeah and the downside is that it's a uh, not magic online yeah even though it's like you could just print that card in regular board yeah it's not really breaking anything um Maybe so they'll maybe hopefully they'll hopefully one it. day. Yeah, maybe one day they do a, a black border version that's just different name. Yeah. That'd be nice. Um and then the ones we don't really like, Grape Shot. It's really hard getting to twenty storm count in a unpowered cube. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. It's so much harder. Because sometimes you fizzle at ten, eleven, but like getting to twenty is near impossible. Sometimes you don't you just don't even have enough spells in your deck to get there. So it's yeah. bad. It's really bad. It's yeah. bad. And then uh, empty the warrens. I've just been very, very un- it, like it's really more, tough. More That's unimpressed. the one that makes the makes the goblins. Show us the goblins on again. Feast. Yeah, and again, ten storm count ten gets you twenty one ones, but they have blockers. Yeah, um, it gives you a bunch of turns to end. And yeah, there's this unrealistic expectation that they have where it's like, oh yeah, but like then your opponent can reply or like you, um, then like other people can play it. No one plays. Empty the worms. It's so yeah. bad. So underwhelming in every yeah, other deck. Yeah, no, every other deck doesn't play it. It's just so, it's so even... overly costed for... Yeah, you need to get Storm Count 2, and then you're like, I guess I'm breaking even, kind of, but I had to work for it. And, like, no other deck can play a 4-mana spare and reliably get Storm Count 3. So yeah. it's just not going to happen. Yeah, so and it's a sorcery, yeah. so you can't even do it like your opponent casts it, and you go, Brainstorm, Empty the worms. No, you can't. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, moving on to our next pillar mana yeah so the trouble is trying to stay on color pie while getting your mana to to be good for storm it's tough like i mentioned seething song in red that that's fine red has that type of ramp yeah that is allowed for red. pyretic ritual has desperate ritual yeah um uh, what's vessel of volatility vessel of volatility is the one in a red enchantment and then one red sack add Red, 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 red. So it so adds the same mana, as Seething Song, but, but the key difference is, A, it's an enchantment. So, so it doesn't get mana. reduced in price. B, you need it's exactly the same once you have it on the field. Yeah. And but, it doesn't count as a storm itself. If but you, when you, you do want to cast it as a storm because you drew off the top, it nets you zero mana because it yeah. costs two, activates two, and then it adds four. So it's exactly the same as you spent. Yeah. So it doesn't do shit while Seething yeah. Song off the top. Now, Seething Song requires one more to activate the turn you play it. Yeah. But who cares? Like, if you're storming yeah. off, it just that extra mana just doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and then Desperate Ritual and Poetic Ritual are just so... They just add one. Yeah, They're so weak. Like, this is where you say, screw Singleton and add more Seething Songs if that's your ritual. Yeah. Or if that's your issue. Um, Desper- and Desperate Ritual is impossible to see play anywhere else. Anyone else playing Desperate Ritual and they're not in a Storm deck, they're doing it wrong. Yeah, almost certainly, and uh, and seething song actually might see play elsewhere as yeah. we talked Whereas about. Whereas paradox ritual is just no one's gonna. It's just one mana. It's not worth a slot yeah. under in most decks. Uh, we do play right to flame. Yes, yeah, so that's the Kindle spell basically. It's one yeah. where uh, it adds. I think it's it's red add two mana. Yeah, red add red red, and then the next add one is red for each. Red yeah, flame exactly. in the yard. So the first one adds red red. The second one you cast adds. Uh, Red, Three. red, red, and then the four. Yeah, so the yeah. first one is a desperate ritual that costs yeah. you one less, but it adds one yeah. less, so it just nets one. Then the second one is a dark ritual, and then the third one's just better. Yeah. Um. So, it requires is, more bre- design space. Yeah, you're breaking singleton because playing one of it is just has the same issue with uh, desperate ritual. Uh, yes. It's just underwhelming. Only yeah. one deck would want it, and yeah. even then, I mean. Uh, we have seen people actually get three or four of these in the same deck it's and pretty, actually do pretty well. Yeah. Like, they do 
actually ramp effectively. Now, generally, you need you need your other cards to really generate more card advantage because you're sacrificing so many cards. Mm -hmm. But it does see it is pretty good in in green ramp decks essentially. Uh, but even then, it's super fringe and it requires a lot of design space. Now, if you want to ever talk about a card that could actually be squadron, this is it. Mm -hmm. You're trying to run storm. This is like the card. This is the situation where we're like, you know what? You can squadron this. But if you're willing, I would much rather squadron that three copies of this or four copies of this than run like a desperate ritual and a paratic ritual yeah. and, and a kill vessel. a bunch of space, yeah. right? So just, just yeah. if you really want, just squadron this. If you don't, put four of them. I know for us it's easy to say put four of them or three of them because we have a storm module, so it's easy. We have the design space. Most cubes probably won't. So yeah, you probably it's probably not an option for most. If cubes. you do squadron, then you will have the off chance that other people play it. And then there is Manamorphos. Which I think is like, I mean, I think that's like clutch for the, the Storm decks and cubes. Because not only, it, it's mana neutral, but it does draw a card. So it kind of keeps... It, it fixes you. Yeah. It draws your card. It's instant speed. And it's red slash green. So and that's the big problem. it counts as a Storm count, yeah. Yeah, it adds a Storm count. It fixes your mana... And it's a free card, so it's like a free storm count. Yeah. The problem is that Metamorphos is super OP, and people like will play it in other decks. You should be playing it literally in, in every, every deck, deck that can, that can run it. Yeah. Yeah, and like, Any I think Patrick deck. Shapin also says it's like, why are decks not running just like four Metamorphoses in Modern? You can just do it because it's free. Just run four Metamorphoses. Yeah. Um, and it kind of breaks Color Pie, and this is the card that breaks Color Pie that will look the other way. We're just like, yeah, you know what? It breaks color pie, whatever. And be because it ends in other people's decks, a lot of most times, you kind of have to run more. So we run three just so like to get the storm player to get one, you know? Yeah. But this is like actually one of the cards for us that is the one that's like, oh, I got a Manamorphos. I can consider storm, right? Like that's, <laughs> it's a weird. Yeah, it's, a, it's place, definitely but. in a weird, weird place in most cubes. Um, but Manamorphos, yeah, very powerful, even outside of cubes, like you said. Like, most decks will just run it, because it's, it's the same kind of, like, with Gataxian Probe-esque type thing, where it's, like, it's... Free? It's, yeah, it's free. It replaces itself. It's basically playing with, like, one less card in your deck. Yep. Um, and that's the big plus. Is yeah. just, and it also fixes you. So, like, there are situations where you're like, man, I need too bad I got Mount Mountain, and I needed Swamp Island... Oh, wait, never mind. Manamorphos, Manamorphos Swap Island. You're like, yeah. what the... Yeah. And you got to draw a card? This is stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you it, yeah. if you're trying to go the way we're trying to go and cutting a lot of the color mm -hmm. pie breakage, you kind of just need to accept that Metamorphosis is key. Yeah. Uh, blue. Turnabout. So that's Good. the one where... Untaps. Uh, either all artifacts, all enchant or all lands, or all creatures. Yeah. Blue's allowed to do that. When you have more than four lands, it... Uh, Nets you mana. Yeah. But it's still within blue's color pie. So, big fan of turnabout. Yeah. Uh, doesn't really see play in other decks. That's it. Yeah. Take um, what you can get. High Tide. That's the bounce two islands. Not yeah. gush. No, High Tide is the... Yeah. Every time in, anyone taps an island until the rest of the game... Or until the rest of the turn, it adds blue, blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or it adds blue on top of whatever. So, if you tap a steam vent... Yeah. For red, it'll actually add blue. Works excellent with turnabout. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of breaks color pie, but not. I think if they did this effect, it would be red. Yeah. But they never did this effect, at least not that effects. I know of. It might be some shit card that doesn't see play. Yeah. And so and it's, it's blue. It's pretty toxic too. Not too many other blue decks really care I about. I think if you have things like upheaval. Maybe. Then you like... I think there are blue decks that play it, but it has to be decks like Upheaval decks. Yeah, so because like, then you can go like, imagine you have like, you can just run mono tide, blue Upheaval, tap out Upheaval, play everything else. Yeah, like imagine Upheavaling, like you go and turn five, you have five islands, you high tide, generate eight mana, Upheaval, or turn six because you have yeah. five lands, right? Then you generate five mana, sorry, you generate eight Upheaval, you have two floating, play an island, blue blue, four. There you go, five islands, high tide Upheaval, and you got. On turn six, you can you can play a four drop, and your opponent has no cards. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah. Um, I mean, if your cube plays 
Uh, upheaval. upheaval. Yeah, upheaval is a little bit of a power card, but we yeah. play upheaval, and it's not that broken because we don't have the artifact. It's hard ramp. to get the yeah. It's hard to get the busted like when you're turn not six, replaying your five. moxes and yeah, exactly. and everything. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That is so true. So it does work with some blue decks, but it is, and it mm. might actually just be like legit good in yeah. mono blue decks. I we've never seen it played, but I think once you pair it with like mono blue, like. High tide turn four with six islands, it might be just like good enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe with five islands, you're just like Thassa and you just like drop your hand or something, or like just some like ludicrous like Stoke Stroker Genius or something. Like, yeah. uh, what is it? Um, Sphinx's Rev. Yeah, like there might be places for high tide, but I do agree with you that it does get a little bit poisonous. Yeah, so also in blue slash, I guess blue slash red, you can get the, the cost reduction like uh, creatures like uh, Baral. Yep. Um, you can get um, Goblin Electromancer. And in black, too. I put it later. I don't know why yeah. I put it later. But uh, Nightscape Familiar also does the same thing. But it's not instant sorcery. It's just red and blue spells. Yeah. But these cards just get run in everywhere. Goblin mm -hmm. Electromancer can be played in pretty much any deck. Boral's fantastic in control decks. Yeah. Uh, Nightscape Familiar's redeeming quality is that it has regenerate. So it can be just be used to block a creature without trample forever. Yeah. And then it also does a, a ton of work in Grixis decks. Mm-hmm. So all three of them super playable in other decks yeah. and super playable in Storm. And they help like yeah, enable Storm to get like they just help it out immensely just to pay one less mana. Yeah. I like, mean if Baral already... is like a legit yeah. high pick and draft. Yeah. Right? For non storm decks. So yeah. super competitive. Um and yeah, you also when you're... put Curious Homunculus. Curious Homunculus but he it's adds hard only for instance when he flips though it's true that is another that is exactly yeah. another he does add one yeah. but if you're able to flip him because like the thing is as we get later storm also likes the low like uh preordained ponder yeah. serum visions all that stuff so if you're able to get him early and then flip him and yeah. he does the work right yeah sometimes your storm draft just doesn't get and there and you pick up that cure some because there's nothing better and then you go build your deck and you're like oh my god i have like 20 good stuff cards for storm i need more and you do what you gotta do, man. And hey, if you have a flip curious homunculus, it does have prowess, so That is you, true. It is also another You could big... like tendrils for like six and then yeah. smack the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, hoping you can swing in, but yeah. still a big beat stick you can make. Yep. Yeah. Uh moving on to black. And this is where things get a little complicated. You have Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual is not a black card. It's broken. And it's busted. Yeah. So that's where we draw our line. Screw Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual is good. Every black deck. Ironically, will take it. Desperate Ritual sees no play. Dark Ritual will see play by everyone. Because yeah. it's just it's such getting two mana ahead of time schedule is so good, especially on the play. Yeah. You can just end the game right there. Right? And uh, like even like turn one swamp dark ritual hypnotic specter, if that's what you're playing. Like that can win you the game. Right? The amount of value you can generate. So no. If if you don't agree with us then you know what? You're just going to end up playing Dark Ritual. Mm. It might be really, really good. You might cut it for power level reasons, but maybe you don't cut it for, um, what is it called? Color uh, color pie issues. But we do. And then there's Kabar Ritual, where it's like, so it's one uh, one red, uh, what, it's the f the regular setting is Desperate Ritual. So one B, B uh, for add BBB. Yeah. Threshold is add five B. So B, 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 B. Now, we do agree that other colors are able to do things that like there are such a thing as a primary color and a secondary color, right? Yeah. For example, blue is the primary color of card draw. But blue just gets card draw. Yeah. The green. secondary color of card draw is green, but green only gets card draw because it's secondary. They don't get raw card draw. They get card draw attached to creatures. Yeah. And tertiary is like black and black gets like pays life or sacrifice yeah. stuff. It's like way more restrictive. Yeah. So that's how I... Cabal Ritual is like that. Look, its regular setting is Desperate Ritual. But we just said Desperate Ritual is too weak. Then okay. Now, if you're able to work at something that Black's willing to do, like, for example, um, Painful Truths, you know, it's it, it's three mana, draw three cards for in Black. Yeah. But you got to pay life, and you got to work for it. This is the same thing. If you're willing to work for it and you get that threshold, then we're okay with it. Yeah. Because its natural state is weak. Now... What that does mean is that instead of like Desperate Ritual that doesn't see play anywhere, I think there'd be a lot of dredge decks that we play that would actually just be happy playing Desperate um, Cabal, Cabal Ritual. Yeah. Because for them, seven cards in the graveyard is easy peasy. Yeah. So you could get this down on like turn three or four 
and now all of a sudden you've added three mana on top of what you spent, and you can you can you can just like hard cast a Gristlebrand. Scary. That is scary on turn four. Yeah. Um. So, it does. It can see play now. It's only graveyard decks, but whatever. Yeah, but if it's your other archetypes, then yeah. So that's certainly something it. that we like. I do think that yeah. with this introduction for us, we will be seeing it pop up in graveyard decks mm -hmm. pretty often. Bumbling muck. So what? What is that card? I'm not familiar with it. Uh, it's um. I don't know why I wrote should be blue over red. It should be blue over black. Uh, Bumbling Muck is the one. It's Sack. Uh, I don't know what I wrote, man. <laughs> bumbling Muck is... Uh, you mean Bubbling oh, Muck? Oh, Bubbling Muck. It's... Uh, what's it called? It's High Tide for black. Okay, so it ramps. It's like High Tide, but instead of islands, yeah. it's swamps. Yeah. And you add swamps. And that's okay. a, we just agreed that since it's not in red, it's in blue. Yeah. Breaks color, probably. Get it out of here. Reign yeah. of Filth. Sack... It, uh, sack a land, add B. Um, there's a red card. It's called Mana Schism. It's a uh, one and a red instead of just black. And instead of sacking to add red, you sack to add one. Yeah. So it's way too weak. Yeah. But this is a red red thing. Breaks color pie. It's out of there. Also, neither of these would see play elsewhere. So who cares? Yeah, you want to reduce the amount of unplayables in other decks. Exactly. And... Which brings us to artifacts. Yeah. I mean, we have Lotus Petal. That's the like the zero mana artifact that gets set. It's like one time mox. It's a what's it called? It's a black lotus, but you only get one mana instead of three. Yeah. Um. So it is very powerful, but I've been kind of unimpressed in un like in powered cubes. You can do unpowered like really busted shit early. Yeah. But in unpowered cubes, it kind of just like it doesn't. It's not that broken. So, but it can be played on other decks, right? Because it is a one time. Like, it's like if you had an Elvish Mystic with Haste that you can only use it once. Or yeah. Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise with Haste that you can only use it once. That's not that broken. Yeah. But it does see play, so it, it fits exactly yeah. what we want. It's not broken. The Storm Deck can get it if they're drafting well. But other people can get it if they want it early. Like, there's a lot of competition yeah. in draft. It fits that. So we're, we're doing it. Until it becomes a problem, we're going to advocate for it. Mm -hmm. Lotus Bloom is way better. I but spend, yeah. it does that thing where it trades... It does something that red is allowed to do, generate mana for, for uh, cards, but it does it worse because it has that suspend time. Now, it does the suspend also because the suspend means it casts. So if you play this on turn zero, you can storm off on turn four or turn one, and you can storm off on turn four and, it count, and your storm counts already at one, plus you have the three extra mana, so it's very powerful. But drawing late, it's way worse than Seething Song because then you're like, oh, damn it, how do I play this? Mm -hmm. And you're not even allowed to cast it like immediately, right? Yeah, like yeah. even if it's in the graveyard, you're not even allowed to pass in flames because it has no casting cast. So um, we're okay with it. It it has its advantages, but it also doesn't break color by right because you're exchanging like yeah. it's worse than a red spell would be. And then uh, LED Lion's Eye Diamond. That's like super powerful, but in powered cubes. Yeah, and that's probably... what the scourge your hand. Draw seven. No, that's discard your, no. That's memory. No, memory jar is yeah. draw seven. This, lion's eye is discard your hand. Add three mana. It's a black oh, yeah. lotus, but yeah. you have to discard your hand. Uh, it's it's just not very good in uh, unpowered storm. Yeah, it's really tough to make it work. Just leave it not... for powered storm. Yeah. Uh, and besides, it's restricted. You don't want to pay for that. <laughs> and I I mean I guess it doesn't break color pie really. I don't know. I don't. I honestly like I've never played with LED in unpowered storm. I'm yeah. fairly certain it just doesn't belong. So we've never tried it and. It's a restricted card, so we just, even if it does work, I don't want to play with it. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into uh, card draw. So, you know, we talked about the ways to generate the mana. So we, you know, mana's good, but you need the cards to cast. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll start with red. Um, you get, like, things like Magus of the Wheel, um, Magmatic Insight, and Aggressive Mining, like yep. you said. So those all, like, Magmatic Insight is the... Is that Saka? No, it's Tormenting Voice, but it costs one less. Yeah. And you need to discard a land. Yeah. So red, sorcery, discard a, as an additional cost, discard a land, and then draw two cards. So yeah. that card's just fantastic. You can play it in any deck. Megas of the Wheel, fantastic. You can play it in any deck. Um, Would you consider that's what we want. Wheel of Fortune type of, like, uh, instead of Megas of the Wheel, put just no, Wheel of Fortune? No, Wheel of Fortune. Way too good. Yeah, because any red deck will want it. Yes, 
and it's it, this is an unpowered so the Megas <laughs> are always every time you're considering the original just consider the Megas yeah. the, the only exception is for uh what's it what's it called um the mind uh mind's desire yeah. because if you do the Megas of the mind it's co- the, the problem is that that Magus costs six mana so you have to get to six because you can't storm yeah. off play him because he doesn't have haste so you can't yeah. treat him the same it's fantastic if you can just get him on board so it just doesn't work out um if you don't want to support storm then Magus of the mind is actually just a viable card yeah. because you can just like cast cast and then cast Magus of the mind so it might be something but the Magus of the wheel and then as we'll see later Magus of uh Magus of the will also yeah. awesome we play with other magus like magus of the library but he's kind of weak so maguses are awesome yeah uh well, for the ones that have we don't play with that many i think it's only three or four but uh it's just a cool cycle mm-hmm. and uh everyone will play it magus of the wheel and then uh, magnetic insight you might even consider doubling it up helps with storm and it fits in any red deck like mm-hmm. yeah in cube it's more likely that your spell gets countered so you lose but like when you're discarding your seventh land who gives a shit whether you like it gets countered or not yeah. like you that land was dead in your hand so if you lose the card advantage who cares yeah uh blue yeah so blue is the bread and butter uh basically any one mana card draw spell will do especially when they uh say scry yeah like you have your ops serum visions ponders preordain and everyone's going to be fighting for yeah these. and and any blue deck these are like the the staples anyone wants to play these cards because they are so powerful almost too powerful if you're an unpowered cube preordain it's pretty good we will once have to have like a 20 minute discussion and about ponder. whether preordains too good for a cube yeah and like ponder, ponder no because yeah. ponder is ponder is restricted to being too good if you have fetches yeah. if you have or no no sorry ponder shuffles itself yeah ponder is really good yeah ponder is pretty good yeah ponder and preordain are the are the power i was thinking houses. brainstorm yeah brainstorm is good yeah brainstorm is a lot better in legacy because you always have a fetch well yeah. for us it's like a lot harder but yeah Ponder and yeah. Preordain. Yeah. But other great draw spells like Ancestral Vision. Yeah. Guess what? Overpowered draw spells are good in Storm. Who would have guessed? <laughs> yeah. And they'll naturally be in your cube, so these are easy. Yeah. And right? we're, we're obviously not talking about Ancestral Recall because that's just powered crap. Yeah. Um, Frantic Search is an all-star. So that's three mana, uh, draw two, discard two, so you lose card advantage, but yeah. then it says untap three lands. Yeah. Awesome for Storm. Yeah. Not so awesome for your other decks. However, for graveyard decks, it can see play. Yeah. Because it gives you a bunch true. of tempo. Like, even if you, like, imagine you draw Gristlebrand and you have this. Well, guess, or like, you can just dig for your reanimator and then you can just play it on the same turn. It's sick. It's like a bizarre, bizarre big dad, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah, you only get to do it once, but you do have that huge tempo of being able to untap your lands uh, and then reanimate immediately, right? So. Uh, it can see play in other stuff. I do like it. The ones that don't see play is cards like Ideas and Bounds, Perilous Reachers, Trade Secrets. They're generally just like storm cards. Are those like the cards that say like draw two, draw three, then discard your hand at the end of turn or something? Well, or? so Ideas and Bounds is draw three and then discard three at the end of turn. Well, yeah. guess what? If you win that turn, you never yeah. have to discard. Or if you spend Perilous all your cards, Research yeah. is interesting though. It's one blue instant draw two, then sack a permanent. Now, usually not very good. But if you have cards like Aggressive Mining or Demonic Pact, yeah. that's some cross synergy. Now you can have the Demonic Pact guy getting other cards that really help him. Yeah, Still fighting with Storm. So Perilous Future can see play, but usually Ideas and Bounds is just a card you got you to gotta just suck it yeah. up and put it in your cube. And uh, that, that will help you. Like that just helps your Storm deck so much. Like Blue Blue Draw 3 is so huge for the guy storming off that you kind of just, yeah, this goes to Storm mm-hmm. deck. Or else it's a 15th pick. And maybe, maybe graveyard decks. Like, I guess Reanimator might see that. Because you go blue, blue, draw three, go to end step, discard Grizzlebrand, and mm-hmm. like a bunch of other shit. And like, maybe that digs you enough, but I doubt it. It's really expensive. It doesn't untap, right? That's yeah. the problem. You don't get the tempo. Black. Ad nauseum. Yeah, that draws a lot. Yeah. So that's just the uh, pay. Oh, uh, that's that three B. No, you're thinking Necropotence. Yeah. Uh, three BB. Uh, reveal the top card, and then you like you dark rich. Uh, you dark. Uh, dark confident as many times as you want. Oh, okay, so yeah. reveal the top, take life. Yeah. Repeat. Repeat. 
repeat. So essentially, you just get to draw until you go to as low life as, as you need. As you can, yeah. And then you just win. Because uh, it just gives a bunch. Uh, yeah. I do think it'll occasionally see play. I don't know if it's correct. It might just be like wrong that these people are playing it. But it's possible that it sees play. It does draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. Right? Life gain theme. If you have a life gain theme, now we're talking. Because if yeah. I gain, I went up to 30, I'll yeah. play an nauseum and like draw 10 cards and go down to like 15, 10. Yeah. Who cares? I'll just gain the life back up. Yeah. Uh, and then the busted shit that should yeah. be reserved for Power Cube that people want to run. Wheel of Fortune, as we talked about. Time Twister. Yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> Time Spiral. Eh, I could see arguments for it, but it's so busted that it's yeah. better not to. Um, Necropotence and yeah. Memory Jar. Memory Jar is a sleeper. It takes a while to, to see the power. Yeah, new that. new players. We, yeah, new players yeah. don't Because it's not talked about as much. Well, because you think my opponent gets to draw 7 2, and then you're like, no, no, no. You use it when he's tapped out. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Or on your turn, and then yeah. he only gets to draw the instances. It's fourth pillar, tutors. Yep. So you have cards like Gamble, which is, I, I think it's a really fun card, which I think fits not only in Storm, but any red deck would usually play a Gamble because. Not usually. A lot of red decks will play gamble. Is there a time when you don't play gamble? Yes, I think if you're super controlling. Yeah, if you're controlling. I think aggro red decks probably love... do because you just start sandbagging lands, and so your odds of keeping the card you want with gamble yeah. are high enough that like you can gamble for lightning bolt or something and finish the game. Yeah. Or gamble for something really important. Uh, Mid range decks less so, I think, and then con- hardcore control decks. Unless you have some like thing that really stabilizes you, I think you don't gamble. Imagine uh, you have some combo mad- decks. Will certainly you have some madness built in to yes. YouTube. Yes, you could get some accidental discard. Yes, that is how we run Tibble. That is like yeah. the core of how Tibble works. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think if you have combo, then gamble fits right in. Yeah, mm. those decks will fight for combo for uh, for gamble. And then Burning Wish, we've been super happy with. It's awesome gameplay. It's not busted, and it's still playable. One in a red. Get a sorcery from your sideboard yeah uh, this does mean that if you're playing a storm you kind of have to like have a storm card there or you run burning wish not for the storm and you run it for the mana or the draw or yeah. the tutors right so yeah. you can like have a a mana spell and a draw spell in your sideboard because you yeah. just have enough and, and then you burn wish for whatever card. you yeah. need yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly and the, the cutting wish works the exact same way yeah. but you need an instant yeah. instead of a sorcery uh also awesome and then mystical tutor also good. Yeah. It's card disadvantage. It's not really busted. It is very good. Control decks will run it because it's mm-hmm. like if you can mystical tutor for like a board wipe or something like that, um, who cares if you're losing card advantage, right? You just get yeah. it right back. Um, and then dark, uh, black dark petition is fair. Yeah. Five mana tutor. Okay. And then because it adds the mana, it really helps storm. Mm-hmm. And other decks, it just helps. Like sometimes you just go dark petition doomblade kill your angel that's gonna kill me in other decks right so it's more than playable yeah. in other decks uh demonic tutor vampiric tutor they're a bit bit busted they're super busted you're kind of delving into power territory with those. yeah i stay away they just like yeah. demonic tutor in unpowered cubes just is become, just like yeah. pack one pick one it's just like the best card it's so busted because two mana to tutor whatever you want and put it in your hand like it's not even card disadvantage yeah um and then grim tutor is fair so that's the one that's that's the three mana tutor. You lose three life. It's fine. Nothing to write home about. Yeah. Uh, storm decks will play it. Non storm decks will play it. Yeah. Nothing special. And uh, and then four mana tutors suck. Yeah. You ever like tried to make diabol diabolic tutor work even in limited, <laughs> or even in in limited? Just... If you have a giant bomb. Yeah. Right. Like if you have like the Ugin or something equivalent, then you're yeah. like, yeah, I'll run this because like, yeah, I'll just tutor for my bomb and then I'll win the game. Mm-hmm. But unless you have that, you're just like. I will tap out to tutor something. Oh, that's my turn. That's an awful tempo play. Yeah, <laughs> I never. You never get enough tempo yeah. out of untap it uh, on the next turn. So yeah, don't stay away. Yeah, and then the last pillar, the extra value stuff. This is where things get spicy. This yeah. is like half the reason to run storm. Yeah, and these are the fun cards that kind of make those games go like, oh, that's a that's a, like an interesting line. That's and a lot of them crazy. Sees play and other stuff. Yeah. So Mizzix mastery. 
it's just awesome. Like is that just the red X, and then you no, Mystic Master is the one you you played in Storm once, and it was like in a completely different module. And then we're like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, the three red cast a spell from your graveyard, yeah. cast an instant sorcery from your graveyard, or overload five red red red. Cast all spells, yeah, each spell in your graveyard, or like spell. I mean, isn't yeah. sorcery. Um, uh, yeah, it turns out you can run that in like a bunch of control decks and a bunch yeah. of mid range decks because red blue. Guess what? Red blue in cube is like half instant sorceries maybe more yeah now all the counter spells are dead but all your lightning bolts all your draw spells right your divinations Mm -hmm. all that stuff you just cast again draw a bunch of cards remove a bunch of creatures it's awesome yeah you got past in flames kind of your red yogmoth's will is it yogmoth's will yeah yeah also more than playable like sometimes an instant sorcery deck just plays past in flames because just you just go replay bolt or replay yeah or replay other stuff and then spell. it kind of draws you too but it draws selective yeah. so it does see play in other places but also super mm-hmm. fun to play in storm yeah just gives it that extra oomph to be able to like recast from the yard yeah kind of like you kind of like gives you a taste of what kind of powered storm is like yeah but not nearly as consistent or mana efficient yes and then Grinning Ignis just is really good at just like generating infinite mana. Or no, generate it's not infinite mana, it's um infinite or a cast for each red. Yeah. So red bounces back to your hand and then he generates the amount of yeah. mana he, he costs. So to every cast, yeah. you can turn every red into a cast. Yeah. So if you're floating like ten mana, two of yeah. which is black, and you need a tendrils, you can generate six casts with Grinning Ignis. So yeah. he just adds a bunch of resilience to yeah. your storm. If you have mana, this one yeah. just helps add storm count. Kind of only sees play in storm. Yeah. But it, technically not. Like, you could use them in other decks where you cast them on turn three, and then turn four, you bounce them back, and then you've generated two colorless mana. So you can cast a six drop, and then a, next turn you play him again. But he's really slow, so you, mm-hmm. usually most cubes are too powerful for that. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe that's what you're desperate for. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you can look at like cards like Magus at a Will, which is like the Yogmoth's Will on a creature. He's awesome. Yeah. He can see play in other decks. Because once you get to late game enough, like mm-hmm. you can just start planning your turn, a big turn. Or he's just a three mana three three. So like he's on curve. But on turn five, six, or when you have eight mana, you're just mm-hmm. like, I'll sack it. Now I have five mana to spend on stuff in my graveyard and I can cast anything. It's off. it's sick. Yeah. Um more than playable without storm although again weaker power level in yeah. compared to the average cube or like whatever this cube that's running the storm is but certainly playable especially in graveyard decks where you're yeah. gonna just be able it essentially acts like a tutor right uh, doomsday is so much fun i was like testing out you know because we did some storm changes recently to our cube and i was test i was gold fishing and let me tell you the games that ended with going like doomsday now select five cards and i'm like <laughs> fucking i'm like sandbagging thinking about what i get it's so much fun and for us plebs who don't play vintage, vintage yeah or legacy i think or is legacy is doom Billy, or doomsday banned in legacy i i'm it's probably banned because i've never seen got it got reprinted in yeah. masters 25 um so it's awesome and i am dying for the day where some rando is like i am just playing doomsday are you storm no i just want to set up my five cards i'll win yeah it's gonna be sick uh other than that even running storm it's just a nice change for storm it's like an interesting card too it's like yeah with necropotence you're just like draw 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 okay doomsday Doomsday costs the same yeah but you need like to think about everything so like usually you want to have lab maniac and some draw yeah well that's yeah which lab maniac a a card that can be in storm and cannot Mm -hmm. right um Maybe with Lab Maniac, you could, like, brainstorm yourself. Or not brain freeze yourself. Mill out your whole deck. And then mm-hmm. force it's, yourself but to draw. But that's not... Yeah, and then force yourself Yeah, and then force yourself to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Uh, could be cool. Or you could, like, again, like, Doomsday doesn't have to be Lab Maniac. That's a common thing. But, like, mm-hmm. you could actually just set up your Storm combo, right? Put Tendrils of Arguments la- or Tendrils of, Ar- Tendrils of Agony wherever you need. Then start drawing and generating mana. Figure out how you work. And then go... Um, and it just adds more fun gameplay for the guy playing Storm. Really, yeah. that's all it does. Um, yeah. And then for Colorless, you have Noxious Revival. It's just a card that it's useful in Storm. It's not useful most anywhere else. But new players will want to play it because they think it's really good. How does it read again? 
Uh, Phyrexian Green, put target card from your graveyard on top of your library. So oh, yes, people are like, card, oh, yeah. this is a regrowth for free. You're like, no, it's card disadvantage. Now, Cube is powerful enough that sometimes, right? Sometimes all you want is a Noxer's Revival to put back the Council's Judgment to deal with the guy thing that's going to kill you, right? right? And look, I will go into card disadvantage any day if it means I don't lose the game, right? Yeah. If you have a card, look, I'm going to win the game. And, and then you can ask, do you want to throw away five cards to kill that? I'm like, yeah, I'm about to lose the game. Who cares? Mm -hmm. So Noxus Revival could see play in non-cube decks, uh, and but it's really important. It also it really helps cube players understand. Look, this is a bad card. This is why it's bad. And yeah, usually like that kind of card isn't really printed anymore in limited, right? So even players that've been playing for a year, they might not understand this because they've only played limited. And yeah, there's like they're not as obvious as this. And this Noxus Revival is like. It looks like a legitimately good card, yeah. right? Like people see it and they're like, "Yes, I want to play that." It's like, no, it's actually bad. But in cube, sometimes it'll be right to play, and yeah. it's a it's a whole other skill to understand when you board this in yeah. and when you don't. And so that's really interesting, and it adds a lot of depth in gameplay. And guess what? It also runs in storm, so yeah. competition, which is what our free, goal. Free spell. Yep. Um, yeah, totally. It's just, you <laughs> just get something back. It's uh, like get probe that doesn't draw a card. Well, it draws exactly the card, essentially, right? It doesn't draw you it the card. Gets it gets you, you the, the card best that... card. And it's instant speed. Get probe sorcery. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs to look at their hand? No and one. it's green. Yeah. Come on. That's a powerful green mm -hmm. spell. Uh, lastly, we are testing a couple of uh, cards that are from recent sets. Bonus round. So that's, that's the, the battle, battle bond yeah. guy. Um, and that's going, essentially, it's like a rever reverberate for everything. We yeah. don't know if it's going to be good. That's like that's like copy. Cop uh, it, each time a player casts an instant or sorcery for the rest of the turn, you just copy it. Yeah. So, seething song. Seething song adds a bunch. Yeah. Then you can ideas unbound and like draw six. It gets pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it does cost three, so we don't know if it'll be good enough. Yeah. And then induce amnesia is the one that you exile your hand or target yeah. player exiles their hand and draws. Oh, and and then that one, many cards. Yeah. And then once that it enchantment leaves, you leaves then you bring so, those cards works back. Works fantastic with perilous research. Yeah, because you can just sack it and then you draw your hand back, or your opponent keeps a hand. Turn three, you just use it on your opponent, screws mm -hmm. up their whole game plan, buys you a bunch of time. Um, uh, we haven't really seen it too much, so we're we're holding judgment, but it, yeah. it's somewhere that we're exploring. And induce amnesia might just be playable in other decks, right? Where you're just like, I'll just play this, it goes down, but like it literally exchanges my whole hand. Yeah. It's like a time twister, but fair. Yeah. Uh, or it just screws up my opponent. Or I have some advantage where I can sack, right? Guess what? Works really well Demonic Pact. However, you're getting sacking that Demonic Pact or that Aggressive Mining. You can sack your Induced Amnesia. Induced Amnesia, exile six cards, sack it, draw six. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of like, yeah, meat and potatoes of, of Unpowered Storm. Mm -hmm. These are kind of like the cards you're trying to think about. And like we said, the five pillars, you need your actual storm cards, the mana, um, the card draw, the, card draw, the tutors. Yeah. Although not necessary. Important yeah. to note, tutors are not necessary, but they do smooth things out. Yeah. And then and you then have the extra value. The, the yeah. fun stuff. The thing that makes you want to go. Or not necropotent. Uh, what is it called? <laughs> oh my God. What uh, is it? Doomsday. Doomsday. Megas of the Will. Doomsday. Yeah. I mean, Doomsday. this is this is the these are the cards that basically have like let's let the storm player jerk off a bit. That is true. That is that is literally yeah. what they're. So they're usually like, the the best way to piss off the storm player is to scoop when before they get to actually do it. Yeah, if they can't no, if they Doomsday, if you know they can do make it. them do it because yeah. you can, it's easy to screw up. Yeah, but if they're like overloading a Mizzix mastery, that game's over, man. I don't yeah. know what kind of storm player is overloading a Mizzix mastery and whiffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've lost a Mizzix mastery being storm. But yeah, so, I mean, I hope that that helps clarify some people who may have thought about running Storm. Maybe you, you know, you listen to it's, this and we're thinking about it, then realize, wow, this is like a lot of cards that are like, you know, we've had some cards that, that are like, yes, every cube would want to play these cards. But I think half, over half of the cards we list are kind of like, eh, I think yes. only Storm wants this card. Yeah. And, and that's the issue with Storm is that, it, it's a very toxic thing to add yep. to, to many cubes. And if you don't have... And the thing is, you want a tight list because if you have a giant cube and you're like, I want to add Storm, 
all of a sudden you're inconsistent and you might not yeah, see you enough. Yeah, pretty much need a 3 And then they become two. non-picks. They just become dead cards and yeah. everyone's sideboard. Or like you have a really tight list and all of a sudden it's too relevant of a archetype. Someone's yeah, you have storm. to. Exactly. You have to and make it. And it's really, really tough to find that balance. Yeah. yeah. But, and it's also really hard to start. Like when we started, does like, oh, what are this? Like, it's hard because the only real way of playing storm is modern or uh i don't know legacy slash vintage mm -hmm. or cube and the a cube online right if you don't have a friend that has a cube that has storm so most players never play storm most cube designers do, don't ha actually mm -hmm. play storm and so yeah. when you don't play storm and you're like man how do i build storm you kind of need like that's why this guide was so nice and why i recommend it so much is that the guy's like look this is how you build storm this is what you need now try it and that's what our approach is look go try it but this is the problem we have with some of these cards and this is the problem we have with you know oh look these are the cards that really push you know um competition and these are the cards that don't this is the cards you do need and mm -hmm. i hope that our our little thing helped you know maybe it was a little too card by card but i think that that's just a, that's just something we have to do and you know hopefully when you're thinking oh look this is what i need to make you're kind of having your mind why did they not like ideas unbound but consider it a necessary evo while you know they like or metamorphose is the same thing yeah. while they say dark ritual no 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 that's the line right or other th stuff in black that we said right like understand where we draw the line and where we say oh this is this is just something you gotta accept yeah. and hopefully that that's what you have in your mind and now you got a pathway and now now you can be like okay hey, try it out and when you try it out you gotta see feedback right yeah. if it's being drafted every every single draft and winning you went too far yeah if it's being if it's never being drafted you didn't go far enough if no one's taking the if the cards in storm are always in the Epson storm you got to change those cards up right start making changes yeah and uh and after years if you never find the happy medium time to get it out mm -hmm. um we'll keep trying and yeah and plus like i don't know there's a reason why well, i mean we've already talked about why the, the vintage cube only lasts for like a month at a time yeah but like you probably watch streamers play legacy or play vintage powered storm. And it's one of those things where when you play against it or when they're playing it, you're kind of like, yeah, I've seen this. This isn't really a, it's a non game. And, and, and it's fun because yes, you get your fix of it. It's fun to do busted things. You know, who doesn't like playing soul rings and, and black Lotus every once in a while, but it's almost like a blessing that they only give it to you in doses so don't let the fact that you only see it once a year when the vintage cube comes around or a couple times a year um that you should really invest your actual physical cube to try to mimic that because that you'll probably play more often and you'll have it longer and you'll have put money yeah. and time investment into it yeah so sometimes it's best to just leave it for the online and and, and pay to do the the phantom draft to get your fix yeah yeah um, um, and that's why we emphasize so many competition, right? Because we really don't want more than like yeah. and we, ten to fifteen cards solely for storm. Yeah. And we don't want we don't want your cube to come stagnant and, and be the same thing over. We want it to evolve. We want people to be trying new things. We want it to be easy to shift your cube if you find people are getting bored of storm. Yeah. If people get bored of storm and all of a sudden like crap, like the majority of players don't like storm in my cube, I should probably change it. Now all of a sudden you're like you can't really easily transition out of storm. It's a hard transition. Yeah, it involves taking away all the it's not like, cards, you know, and then the ones that do multiple archetypes will probably end up leaving yeah, eventually. It's not as simple as like, bit, yeah, you know, you know, making your blue more controlling or something. I don't know, like just take True. out low mana creatures and add more counter spells. Like it's that's easier to do to change those themes than it is to change a really toxic one because all of a sudden you don't you have way more cards that. Yep. need hard replacements versus cards that can easily mold yep. into other decks easier. But on the plus side, if you're considering a modular cube, and you listen to last episode, this is a great module to add once you get pretty good at it. Again, yep. once you get pretty good at it, yep. that's what I would suggest. Um, it's not it's not an easy thing to do, and if you're still like learning the ropes of modular cube, you probably don't want to start yeah, there. But it once you falls have like a toxic scale. Yeah, once you have like twenty modules, you know, or something like that, and, and look, you're like, 
I'm never gonna have 20 modules. Ah, shut up! You're gonna have 20 modules. <laughs> You're a magic player. It's an addiction. Yeah, it's like it's like those people with the ADH decks. They're like, I'm only ever gonna have one, and it's like two years later, and they have they like have five, 10. and then it's like, well, I might as well go for it a 33. I think it's 33 30, or is it 32. 32, yeah. Yeah, because they go colorless. 10, 10, 5, 5, 1, 1, right? And colorless? Did you get yeah, colorless? Yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, but anyways, it's like those people. But then, I don't know. It is like those people. So. Once you get like your your fifteen sixteen, you're there, and you're like, man, I'm getting pretty yeah, decent at you, this. Then yep. you can tackle storm, and look, storm's great for module cube because you don't see it all the time. Once, don't especially have to play for us, it all the time. Like even if we were purely random, we're only gonna see it every like uh, nowadays. It's what seven drafts, six every or seven two drafts. Months. Yeah, every month and a half, and then even then, there's no guarantee someone's gonna be able to ascend all of it, right? Yeah. So even if it has a fifty percent assemble rate, you're mm-hmm. only talking about once every three months. So Three players have to play it once every three months. Yeah, I, I, I will take that. Because then also, you know, maybe maybe even you play eight times a year. Everyone gets to draft once if you have a playgroup A. That's really cool. I want to play Storm once a year. That's really fun. I don't want to play it every week. Yeah. Modular Cube solves all that. Yeah. So And you can also go a little bit further with the Poisonous, right? Because it happens less often. Yeah. So certainly something that you can think about yeah something to consider so i think that should wrap up uh this week's episode yes hopefully you you learn a lot and if you have any comments we'd like to learn too so yeah let us know if you you know think oh this card's you know something we didn't didn't mention if this card's like great to include in 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 unpowered storm because it fits so many i'm sure we missed a few so yep we did do the big hitters yeah um mostly yeah also i think we hit all the cards that he did on his uh on his reddit yeah so now when you're reading it you can be like oh okay i'm yeah. familiar with all these and i'm familiar yeah. with what like what breaks what doesn't break what works really well and unpowered what works because yeah. really he does it for powered for most part mm-hmm. like he does talk about led and this stuff um and magus um uh, will Yag- Yag- will so we uh and we kind of we want to we really want to emphasize the unpowered storm and yeah. like how because you know, just because it's unpowered doesn't mean that you can't enjoy Storm. Yeah. So yeah. it is just harder. So also, yeah, go read the the article we'll link. Yeah. Give the guy an upvote. I I didn't. Yeah. I don't, don't have, have an account. account. Anyways, if you want, give him an upvote. Yeah. Um, and until next week, happy cubing. Peace. Peace.